the bulls and the steers all agree they like the inline fence feeder. It's Saturday, project day. I've got a project that's been on my mind. I'm gonna go ahead and do it today because we had a chain of events, circumstances that just worked itself out for me to go ahead and do a uh, a line hay feeder. I've got some posts left over from the fencing project, and I've got I've got this uh, round bell feeder that uh, developed a kink in it. And the cows decided they was going to destroy it. This is a three-piece feeder. So basically one piece, I'll take you over here and show it to you real fast. One piece got damaged real bad. Well, it pretty much broke in half. This is why I'll probably be, probably be buying the, uh, the century feeders, the uh, plastic feeders from here on out. Because that was really just, this was just a waste of money. But that right there. That's one section that broke in half on that round bell feeder. So, I'm down a feeder. So instead of just throwing this away, taking it to the scrap yard or figuring something else out to do with it, I'm upcycling it. Upcycling it so I don't lose the feeder capabilities. So right behind me here is half a bell feeder. I'm gonna stick it right in there in the fence. Put me two posts in, gotta drive them deep. And I'm gonna attach this bell feeder on the inside of the fence. And I'll have a line feeder. I'm gonna use it for this small pasture. There's like five acres up here that, uh, that uh, I've got these steers in right now in the bull. It's just a little, it's just a little pasture. So I'm gonna use that line feeder for that little pasture. So I'm not going to lose my feeding capabilities. So yeah, excited about this. I'll take you along and uh, let's see how it turns out. Cowboy Jack's in the house. He's actually going to work. You're going to work. Yeah. He's going to dig. He's going to dig a little post, little post holes with me. Feeding off this long term. You want to go ahead and do your high use pad where they're going to be standing. You know, either with um, geo mat and gravel or concrete but there's just a little bit of winter left hopefully another month or so um and i've just got a few steers in the bull over there so i'm going to just let them just work it and then hopefully maybe this summer that'll be a good little project to make that high use pad in case we got some heifers we want to separate and put over there on that little pasture or something we'll be able to feed them hay and it'll work out great so beautiful day we're going to do something. Just got done eating the big, the big McDonald's breakfast. Guys, I'm a fan of McDonald's, mainly for breakfast. I mean, th their sandwiches are okay. Big Macs are good. Yeah, Big Macs are good. Yeah, I've had a few Big Macs in my time. <laughs> but, now the breakfast, I like that biscuits and gravy. Anyway, hope you're doing well. I'll show you some more. Thanks for watching, Southern Cowman. Okay, I uh, probably should have waited until after the big McDonald's breakfast to be doing this. Because my, my big McDonald's breakfast tied with these overalls, it's hard to bend over. Anyway, Crescent Wrench. I'm taking these old, these old bolts off this feeder. Get back in here and look here, buddy. Not, not so close to it. All right, is it focused good? Mm-hmm, it's good. Uh, I'm going ahead and... Uh, and putting these washers on you see how that's wallered them holes out right there mm -hmm. should have had washers on it there you go thank you sir You're welcome this just should have had a washer on it from the get-go but anyway i guess the manufacturer don't think you need a washer but i'm putting washers on these taking them off and i'm going to start them back And tighten them down and I'm just re just kind of rehabbing these bolts for the line feeder
washer should help uh, hold it pretty good. I'm not getting these killer killer tight right now because I'm going to uh, do the rest of them. You just want to kind of make sure you line up your, your feeder pieces. All right, so I've got two more bolts to do that way, put washers on them, and then come over to this side. This will be the side that we're actually attaching to the wood posts. It'll all make sense in just a second. I got to take this old bent bolt out and nut if I can get it off. I got to take this off because we're actually going to go through these holes and attach into our wood post. I'll show you guys. It's gonna be a cool little project you can do. Simple project if you've got a line fence uh, and you've got an old feeder that, uh, like I said, that you can uh, use for this. There we go. Leave this post out of the way. Well, we're gonna move that post in just a second. We're leaving that post there for a reason so we get it. Whoa. All right, so we're gonna set that there. We're gonna measure and get our next one set. And then we're going to show you how this works out, guys. Little steer feeder here. Okay, stay tuned. Oh, let me show you these bolts real quick. I went ahead and rehabbed all the bolts and nuts, put washers on them. They should have had washers on them to begin with. Um, they've got that little plastic uh, piece that goes on the back. That's just, I'm not sure, it's just like a little thread protector. Had to replace that big bolt there, and I did have a lock washer, I mean a lock nut. Put a lock nut on that one. So the feeder's together. We're gonna flip it over here and get it set in. And uh, hopefully, guys, we're gonna have us a little inline feeder here in just a few minutes. Okay, on these posts, my son, he's dug these. Down there, we dug these 42 42 inches deep no 43 inches deep 43 look how wet look at the water down there at the bottom of that hole we've had so much rain and this is just flat land and it's lower land so it's just held so much water so anyway we've got the bolts rehabbed washers on lock nuts next I've drug out the drill I'm going to have some end, uh, end post insulators i got to put on these two posts when we put them in. And this project, really and truly, at this point, we're halfway done. We are halfway done. This hole here is about, about done. Look how deep that is. Stick, stick that down there, son. That's a deep hole. Um, honestly... There's tradebacks with every piece of property. Uh, with this property, it's softer ground. It it retains a lot of water. Uh, in the wintertime especially, it's, it's pretty soggy and, and gross. So the tradeback is when it's time to dig a hole, it's, <laughs> it's pretty easy. There's no rocks. Um, the other benefit of this land is it retains water and it grows a lot of grass. So our farm is smaller. It's a smaller farm. But I can run, I can run more cows than a lot of bigger places in the area. Because mine's all grass and mine's flatter. And it just, it just grows grass. I mean, this ground grows grass and that's what you want. Now, don't look at it right now because, I mean, we're in first week of February and this is what you deal with in the, in the wintertime. But come spring, I'll show you. So, we had to shut the steers and the bull up there. Like I said, we've divided this farm up. We've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six pastures. Five bigger ones and uh, the small one here. 
But uh, yeah, we had to shut them up for now because they was coming down here and they wanted to get in our hole we were digging. So he's checking for measurement. We're going to do this one at 43 to keep it the same as the other. And where are we at? Hadn't even moved here. Hadn't even moved. No. You were probably cleaning out where I had widened the top of that hole out. Sorry, some of that dirt got down in there. We'll bring back, we'll bring back to you this project in just a few. Okay, I'm going to show you a little trick here, guys, that I've used on posts. If you're not using concrete, we've dug the hole, we put some dirt in there, we've leveled the post, we've tamped it. Now we're going to put some water in. We're going to tamp some more. Go ahead, buddy. Keep going. 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 All right, stop. Now, we're going to let that soak down, if it does go down. Like I said, it's so wet. And what that's going to do, that's going to kind of draw up around the post. We're not making a cake. We're setting a post without concrete. This one here, we've got the post in. These are beefy posts. You want to use a good beefy post on this. We've got these in. We've got the post leveled. We've put dirt down about halfway. We've tamped it. It's hard to tamp down 43 inches, so you just got to do the best you can. But the way the post hole digger is designed, it gets narrow as it goes down. So your post at the bottom is going to be a lot tighter than when it comes up. So anyway, we've got this post level. We've got dirt. We've tamped it. Now we're going to come over here and pour some water in it. Maybe not as much water because I can see that water is not going anywhere. This ground is just saturated. That's good. What that does is that just helps draw your post down in the ground, guys. Oh, you can hear that's going Listen down. here. <laughs> Almost sound like you flush a toilet. Pour some more water in there. Also, what that's doing is that's working all that. You know, we got clay here, so that's just working that clay down in the crevices around the post any of the voids keep good? going you want me to the whole yeah I just bucket? finished the rest of it all right that's good, sure that's good. so that's just going to help kind of fill the voids around the post it really does sink it down and draw it up why am i not using ideally it would have been best to drive this with the post pounder but the post pounder is not here so why am i not using concrete well, I like not using concrete in case I ever want to change this around or move this or even pull these posts up and maybe reuse them. You know, if it's not too far along, I can do that. I can grab these with the hydraulics on the tractor and just pull them straight up and out. All right. We're going to keep tamping these and we're almost finished. All right, guys, we've got our posts in. Now we are going to we got to fix this electric wire. These are pretty heavy deals here. I got these from the NRCS office. Guys, you can get products and fence supplies if you didn't know from your local NRCS office. At least you can in my county. Check them out. They've got some good supplies for really good prices. And they're a real good resource if you've got questions or you've got ideas about your property. So now I know that this single, stri uh, single strand of hot fence is 30, feet, uh, 30 inches off the ground. So I've got to put me an insulator here to attach it. Um, will you hold this, sir? Yeah. And it gives me kind of a finished height. I'm just going to kind of set this. We're going to go 30 inches, come over here next to the post, right? there i'm going to put 30 inches to the center of this thing and you're going to go ahead and screw it in
you want to use a good quality wood screw, you want to use a good quality outdoor wood screw. And now, you'll have me my pliers over there, good sir. And you will hold that wire. Jack said he turned the fence off, so I'm trusting him. I did. Stop! It stopped beeping, right? Mm-hmm. He's been shocked by now, trust me. Yeah, I'd say. All right, I'm going to hold this. Oh, he's going to cut it. You got your end? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, you're committed at this point, guys, to finish this project today. All right, follow with me here. Here we go. This is as basic as they come. I actually do not need this split bolt. Or do I? Do I want to use the split bolt? I think I do. Actually, guys. Go ahead and use a split bolt on this deal. It's really cool. You can just take your wire. And go up in between the split bolt, just like that, just like that, guys. Run it through the center of that split bolt. That's neat. Very neat. Very cool system here, and it don't have to be super tight. That's all there is to this. That's all there is to that. Cut your excess off. Nice clean. Very strong. Still top. All right, we made a termination here. My power's feeding from that way to here, so I'll have power right to here. But what are we going to do about the gap? Well, to keep power going on down the line, I'm going to have to carry power from there to here. But we got a gap here, and this is going to be a gap where we're going to put our hay inside. For that, we'll use some underground wire that's coated with a heavy-duty plastic coating that you can bury under underground. Just a jumper wire to carry the power from there to here. Or if we wanted to go a different route, we could go high. We could uh, screw us some poles up here and go up overhead with the power. Or we could come out the back, which is probably what I'm going to do, and just hook on with a handle and a handle or an alligator clip and just have power going around the outside of it. And when we want to get in to put our hay in, we'll just undo the handle and put the hay in several options on that guys but stay tuned we'll finish this up and show you some more stay tuned all right now go that way go to dad walk to dad yep come my way good job good job I set it down stay keep on. pressure on it yep and now they just push it down to the ground keep flip it. it over yep good job boys good job boys all right you see how it's going to work now and there you go guys here is you a inline feeder I've got one out for them. I was going to show you guys what I'm using on this to chat to attach it. These are four inch structural screws, Simpson structural screws, guys. If you've never used these Simpson Simpson structural screws, you're missing out. They're expensive. They're about a dollar a piece, but they are the bee's knees. They're stout. And these will work perfect. I went ahead and paired it up with a little washer. And I'll be putting three in each post. And should be good to go. We'll put some hay in here and see if the uh, steers like it. There it is. Hold that, please. There it is, guys. Is 
See what we've done? We've created an inline feeder in the mud. And I just got a text that lunch is ready. All right. There it is, guys. See how straight? Looks good. That's what you can do with two six inch wooden posts, an old feeder that could be damaged, but you can saddle and save the half of it. A little bit of time, some little bit of work. I'll show you when, in the, when we got cows in here eating or, or steers in here eating on this, I'll show you and film, film that. But that is awesome. That's a good little project for a Saturday. Okay guys, finishing this project up. Last little staple to put in. That's gonna hold this uh, piece of thick rubber insulator in place so nothing shorts out. Uh, I'm gonna staple this in. Hold my mouth right. Well, staple needs to be pulled out a little bit to go over that. You can take them on over the other side and show them how we hooked the power on, how we grabbed the power there. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to spread this staple out just a little bit so it'll go over that insulator. I think that's going to... There she blows, guys. That ain't going nowhere. That's how we did it. That's how I decided to get power. From here, jump over this gap. I'm just taking, open it up, put my bell in. That's it, guys. Simple project. A little bit of time, a little bit of thinking, laying it out. Like I said, this summer, when it dries out good, I'll come in here and I'll dig this out, I'll scrape this out. Probably rent a skid steer and scrape this out down about six, eight inches. Put me some geotech down and bring me some good heavy crushing run in and pack it so it's a high use area. We're not going to be having a lot of cows or anything or big heavy cows over here on this eating. This is really for the, the steers and this will be really for weaning calves or if we've got a heifer or something we need to keep away from the bull, we'll put them in this small five acre pasture. And this just will be a great, quick, uh, easy way to feed them. And I didn't throw away this feeder. I've re reused it, guys. Appreciate the subscribers. I've had some new subscribers. I've had some new interest. I appreciate all that. Guys, this is a small family farm um, on a budget. But it's just, a, it's just a great way to raise a family and to spend a Saturday. So now it's time to go eat lunch. Like, subscribe, comment. I'd love, I'd love to have more comments um, and subscribers. Appreciate everything. This little inline feeder turned out really good. I'm real tickled with how it turned out. As you can see, you can put a four by five roll in there and uh, it just goes in there perfect, guys. Got room to even put that little 
wire on the back side. You don't need that wire, but I need it until I bury my underground jumper wire. For, for now, it's carrying the current on down the fence line. But once I bury that underground wire, I'll take that out of the equation because I'm kind of concerned that they might push that bail into the wire and short out the fence. But I'll get that underground wire here in the next day or so and get that done. But all in all, that is perfect, guys. You know what the nicest thing about this is? For one, it didn't cost a lot of money. For two, I already had the feeder. For three, you don't have to go trudging out in the muddy pasture to put your bale out. I come right off the drive and just <whistles> scoot that bale right in there. Pretty nice. Thanks for liking our videos. Thanks for watching our videos. Thanks for supporting a small family farm. Hope you're doing well. Love your neighbors yourself. Always do the right thing in every situation and try to keep your head up. Because every day above ground, it's a good day.